earlier than the signing of the Constitution, you will see their names inside the walls of this courthouse as you go in there right now. And of course those documents will remain. The question is, as, is could those documents be uh, expanded to include other documents, such as the Ten Commandments, such as the Star Spangled Banner, which mentions God in one of the verses of that, our Star Spangled Banner, our National Anthem. Now, to complicate the matter, over the last 25 years, and may I say there's nothing more um, exasperating than to try to read some of these court decisions and try to find out what the law is, in one decision, uh, a 5-4 to four decision in Kentucky, and this was decided in 2005, in one decision it was a 5-4 to four decision as to whether or not the Ten Commandments could be put on a wall. And in a 5-4 to four decision, the U.S. Supreme Court said no. You can't do that. That establishes a church. In another decision decided the same day, in a 5-3 to three decision, the United States Supreme Court said that in the state of Texas, you could allow the Ten Commandments, a six-foot statue of the Ten Commandments, to be placed on the lawn there in Austin, Texas at the state capitol building. So, go figure. You have two opinions, five to three and five to four, decided on the exact same day. One says you can post the commandments, and one says that you can't. And may I also say, the last time I was in Jefferson City, I remember the Ten Commandments being placed there on the Capitol grounds uh, there in Jefferson City, where it remains to this day. Now, as the attorney, Mr. Passanisi and I have spent hours going over the law, looking at the poster in question, and we have decided that notwithstanding the fact that our client's original intent in posting it was a patriotic one, there's no question about it, that it was a patriotic, uh, pure, good intent on his part. When he, when he looked at it and read it, it has Iwo Jima on it, it has One Nation Under God, our national motto. Uh, I mean, we have these things on our coins in your pocket right now. And when Mr. Helms looked at it, he thought this was a patriotic thing to do and innocently placed it on the bulletin board where there has been at least one complaint. Now, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, from my standpoint at least, uh, as a personal note, I have to say that even though the vast majority of Americans believe in God, and in fact the vast majority of Americans believe in the Bible and believe in Jesus Christ, notwithstanding the fact of those things, we're all under the same laws. And we have to, whether we like it or not, obey the laws and the case decisions that construe those laws as decided by the U.S. Supreme Court. So, notwithstanding the intentions of our client in placing it, we, we believe that a lawsuit could be filed. And if that lawsuit were filed under the federal civil rights laws today, if that plaintiff got an award of one dollar for minimal damages, it could support uh, another award for punitive damages, and worse yet, it could support an award for attorney fees for the plaintiff in that case. That's all governed by federal statute. And I don't think that Mr. Helms or any other person here particularly wants to spend a lot of taxpayer dollars defending something that probably uh, well, not probably, but I'd say there is a chance uh, we would lose such a lawsuit. And it would be your tax dollars involved that would eventually go to uh, an organization that probably you're not in favor, you may not be in favor of. So I don't think any of us want that. Though. So notwithstanding the fact of the intentions of our client, we are a nation of laws, and we all have to obey the laws as we understand them. Our founding fathers, among other things, said that we can recognize our history, which we can do. There's nothing wrong with recognizing American history. But our government cannot prefer one religion over the other. This doesn't mean we have to erase our history, 
but it also means what it says is that the government can't give a preference to one faith over the other. As a result, my recommendation to my client, Mr. Passanisi and I decided that the best thing in this case to do legally would be to remove the poster in question, place it somewhere else on private property. Uh, this does not foreclose the fact that other civic groups, some of whom are represented today, could in fact uh, have the commandments and other documents placed inside the historic courthouse or anywhere else, as long as it is done for the purpose of showing our American history and our background and our beliefs. So that's our decision, that was our recommendation to Mr. Helms, and thank you for hearing me out, and I appreciate you being here today. Steve, have you, have you taken the poster down yet? Uh, the poster's not there now. I mean, seeing where you're putting it? Are you putting it in? At this time, I don't have an exact location. Uh, we'll be looking with that. I'm happy for any business that would like to have one in their office so, or place of business. Contact me, and we'll be happy to uh, uh, supply them with the poster. And how many did you snatch up? Uh, the last group that I have, uh, I think I've got about 95, 96 posters. Bought with your own money? Uh, they were given to me by the gentleman that actually designed this poster. Do you feel, I don't know, I mean, disappointed that, that it had to, took this road? That, you know, you sort of stood behind this thing. Well, I'm disappointed in the sense that we had to take the poster down, but my intention all along had to do with everything to honor those who fell on 9-11. Uh, it was not a religious statement in the sense that, you know, when I put it up there, it was strictly to honor those, and so I apologize that anybody was offended. And so, now that it's out there, I think many more people have seen this. Many poor people uh, have an opportunity to view it. So, I don't think it's a loss in that sense. Um, you feel like public opinion is behind you in this one? You know, I think that the majority of Americans believe in the Ten Commandments. I believe in the values that they have. Um, I have a strong faith like many others in the past, and as a public official, I will abide by the law. Uh, that's why I sought uh, legal counsel, and you know, I don't know what else to say about it other than I did what I thought was right. Uh, I had no intention in the beginning to do anything that was wrong, and. You know, I think the majority of uh, Greene County is obvious in the support that we've had. They, nobody wanted, except for a handful of people, to have that taken down out of the courthouse. My, my concern is that the Ten Commandments represent both Judaic and Christian values, and it's very difficult to understand how someone would think that that is to a particular religion. I understand the intent of your heart, uh -huh was to do the right thing, and for that I think you're a hero. Well, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Um, and I've done a lot of research, and of course my attorneys have 